So now in this video we're going to look at another 7400 series integrated circuit right here. This is the 7414. The specific one we're using is the 74HC14, the high speed CMOS version. So the high speed CMOS version of these integrated circuits are usually a bit more versatile than the other ones. And so you'd want to check the data sheet for the limitations of the particular one you got. But if you have a high speed CMOS version, you should be able to power it with uh, 2 to 6 volts recommended and a uh, maximum of uh, syncing or sourcing 25 milliamps of current from the outputs. But uh, remember that uh, there's a total current of uh, maximum current of probably about 50 milliamps. And uh, so if you're using all six of them, you'd want to lower the current. But uh, in any case, the 7414 is a hex. There's six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, right there. Schmidt trigger inverters. So inverters, when it comes to digital components, are not gates. If you give an input of one, you'll get an output of zero. If you give an input of zero, you get an output of one. So in this case, we're going to use 5 volts. Keep it simple. 1 is close to 5 volts, and 0 is close to 0 volts. Now, the uh, output probably doesn't, especially uh, for the 1, probably doesn't output 5 volts. Maybe it outputs 4 volts when the output's high. And then maybe it goes down to 0 volts. Maybe it doesn't when the output is low. But in case, it's uh, close to, uh, if you're using a 5 volt power supply, 0 and 5 volts. When it comes to the input, now, this is a input that doesn't need an exact voltage. In fact, being a Schmidt trigger, it has a couple of different range of voltages. So somewhere about halfway and above is a high input. Somewhere about halfway and below is a low input. But there's hysteresis. So if you give it a high input, then the output goes low. You actually have to go down low a little bit more to give a low input, which will give a high output. Once you do that, then you have to go up a little bit more. That middle range is hysteresis. So you got to go up a little extra to get a high input and a low output. We will look at that coming up. We're going to use LEDs to get a visual of when the output is high or low. So when the output is high, It'll be as close to 5 volts as it can get. You can see the red LED will light up. When the output is low, it'll be as close to 0 volts as it can get. Right there. And so the blue LED will light up. I like using that color scheme. We have a higher value resistor, 1 kilo ohm, protecting the blue LED because it's naturally brighter. A lot less current gets it just as bright as the red LED. So a lower value resistor, 220 ohm, to protect the red LED. We do not want to leave inputs floating. I should have said unused inputs, but uh, in any case, we will uh, come over here and look at what that means. First, we have to power the integrated circuit. So VCC, that's positive supply right up there to pin 14. Uh, pin number seven goes to ground, the negative side of the power supply. And so I just tied all of the inputs on this side. So input is A, you can see those spots there we have directly to ground. You could use a resistor too to help avoid short circuits or something, like right between those two points. But in any case, you can connect it directly to ground. The inputs don't let current in or out. Since we have a ground powering that side, I put these two unused inputs to the positive supply right there. And our signal is going to come from the trim pot, 10 kilo ohm trim pot. Both sides of the resistive element right there are to the power supply. And then the wiper, the part internally that connects to where I turn the uh, dial there, the wiper, is going to the input up there of the uh, integrated circuit. There you can see 1A right there. Now, what we're going to do is uh, take the LEDs and hook them up. So the output is down one spot there. And we're going to take a 1 kilo ohm resistor. Come from the output there to one spot above that orange jumper. 
So the long lead, the anode of the blue LED has to go to the orange jumper and they got a little bent somehow. Short lead the cathode right there. So we're actually swapping the order right there. Long lead anode to five volts and short lead cathode headed towards the output, but it's actually connected to the resistor. And uh, we're gonna take 220 ohm resistor there, go one spot away from the ground jumper there, but not to the uh, output of that one. So down and uh, so that's gonna be more positive when the red LED lights up. So long lead the anode to the resistor, short lead the cathode to that gray jumper right there. And that is it, we are done. We will grab the uh, power supply and I have it to uh, 5.1 because I was using the uh, USB before. It automatically sets it to that, but that's close enough to five to just say five. I limit current to 20 milliamps of current in case I do something wrong. We shouldn't blow an LED. So right now the output is low, which tells us that the input was high. So it was below halfway though, as we saw before. And before we pull back, you can see we got a lot more current going through the red LED, somewhere around 11 milliamps than the blue LED, somewhere around two milliamps because of the resistors we picked. So in any case, you can see high input, that side of the LED is high so that tells us the output is low right there and uh, now we go down and the red LED lights up now we'll look at the hysteresis right there so low input high output red LED and you're gonna see that I gotta go up looks like somewhere about halfway actually that that's high and uh, then the output goes low so now we go down but you can see here we have to go down quite a bit now to get a low input and a high output and now we got to work our way back up there's this middle ground right here that's hysteresis right there and another thing you'll notice about the uh, Schmidt trigger is that the LED turns on instantly if I go really slow we should not have any period of time where they're both kinda lit because there's a middle ground it goes directly from one state to the other that's another uh, benefit of the Schmidt trigger so it's not one specific point where if it just kind of shifts slightly, it'll bounce back and forth. You have to go over a range to get it to change. So, in any case, that's about it. Hopefully that wasn't too long. Hopefully you enjoyed. And uh, that's the end of this video. Make sure you check out one of the other ones I'm posting the screen. If you can, some, uh, donate. That would help a lot. I have links down below. But otherwise, I appreciate that you watched the video. That helps a lot too. Thanks for that. I'll see you in the next video.